Know thyself. Know thyself. Fighting is mind. Consciousness doesn't pick up a gun and start shooting at another expression of consciousness. Mind does that. So anyone who thinks that fighting and violence is a way forward is in mind, not consciousness. What you fight, you become. It's the same with um, violent rebellion against the system itself. If you, if you bring in a change through violence, you're just going to create another society that mirrors the one you've just removed. What you fight, you become. You see this all the time. Where people fight a perceived injustice and use the same methods that the injustice is using. This sort of stuff is a meeting of mind. And the control system doesn't uh, worry about protest to extent. Freedom fighters, that's a lovely one. Contradiction in terms. You don't fight for freedom, you express your freedom. You don't fight for peace, you peace for peace. That's how peace comes about. Cognitive dissonance, lying to ourselves. We fight for justice. We fight for peace. No, we don't. We fight to fight and create more conflict. Martin Luther King said, the limitation of riots, moral questions aside, is that they cannot win and their participants know it. Hence, rioting is not revolutionary but reactionary because it invites defeat. It involves an emotional catharsis, but it must be followed by a sense of futility. Like I said, um, this is not about hating that which enslaves us. Otherwise, we become that which enslaves us. We have to meet it with a different um, energy to what it's putting out. Otherwise, we become what it is. And in terms of protests... You know, there was a million people on the streets of London protesting before the Iraq invasion, protesting against the invasion of Iraq. What did they do? They invaded Iraq. How many protests have there been about globalization? What happens? Globalization gets faster and faster and faster. And in so many ways, protests can be what I symbolized here, a steam whistle. A way of letting off steam and taking out anger from, from opposition, but nothing changes. They're not frightened of that. What they're terrified of is this. Humanity coming together. Putting down the irrelevant, manufactured fault lines of different religious beliefs and political beliefs and cultures and income brackets. And uniting behind something that affects us all. The fact that our basic freedoms are being withdrawn and are planned to be massively more withdrawn than they already have been. Because this is not a conspiracy to enslave Jewish people or Muslims or middle class Americans or South African uh, blacks. This is a conspiracy to enslave all of us and therefore, we all need to come together to be united behind what affects us all. Martin Luther King said, Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So often you see people, oh yeah, well that doesn't affect me. It's an injustice, yes, yeah, it doesn't affect me. Oh, that doesn't affect me, and that doesn't affect me. And then eventually it does affect you because of the process that you've allowed to happen by saying it's not my problem. It's like that pastor said in Nazi, or after Nazi Germany. He said, first they came for the Jews and I was not a Jew, so I did nothing. Then they came for the communists and I was not a communist, so I did nothing. Then they came for the trade unionists. I was not a trade unionist, so I did nothing. Then they came for me and there was no one left to speak out for me. And what's happening now around the world is they're picking off different sections. They're picking off the Muslims in this area and that area. They're picking off these people and this level and middle class Americans and all that stuff. And everyone's going, it's not my problem. We'll leave them to it. If we are going to live in a just world and a free world, everyone else's injustice must become our injustice. 
And we must stand by other people, even though that we're not affected by it. As King said, in the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. And we all need to become each other's friend. Silence is consent. Can you hear us now? And it is. Silence is consent. This control system has reached its, its, its point that we're facing now because so many people have looked the other way and been silent. Enough. If you want to be free, then don't run and hide. This is why opening to consciousness and coming from the full under, an understanding of the true nature of who we are, consciousness having experience is so important because then we don't run away and hide. Because, okay, you know, we lose our lives, fine, okay, uh, and I've just gone from a uh, limitation to all those things the near-death experience have talked about. I'm terrified. Not that they can do it, they can't, unless I allow it. Mahatma Gandhi said, strength does not come from physical capacity, but from an indomitable will. Isn't it amazing how you see extraordinary feats of physical bravery? that soldiers do in Afghanistan in the Second World War. Amazing feats of amazing physical bravery, and yet they're terrified of saying boo to someone in a uniform with more stripes on their shoulder than they've got. Strange. But that's what we do. An indomitable will is not just a physical will. It's a, if you like, a moral will not to be, not to be acquiescent to authority just because it seems to have more power. As this Turkish um, saying says, a lion sleeps in the heart of every brave man and woman. The lion sleeps in the heart of everybody. It's just gone to sleep. Know thyself. What is there to fear when you realize your consciousness, infinite eternal consciousness? You can look at this and you can be uh, intimidated by it. Oh my God, look. These brainless people in uniforms with sticks, I'm terrified. Or you can do this. <laughs> eh? <laughs> it's just a different perception of the same situation. The only way we can be controlled en masse is if we comply, to use this American word that keeps getting repeated, if we comply with what we're told we must do. If someone is in the parliament and they come out and they say, we've had a discussion and we've decided this is going to happen. If the people in enough numbers say, no, it's not, where's the power? The power is in acquiescence. Oh, well, I don't agree with it, but I suppose we better all do it. It's the law. Why? If it's unjust, if it's controlling, if it's suppressing. Because this is a, this is a, <laughs> this tells the story, this. The pyramid, where do we look at in a pyramid for power? We look there at the top, where the eye is. Oh, there's the power in the pyramid. That's what we see in these structures. But look at it. They few are up there because these silly sods in vast numbers are here holding that up. When we walk out and say we're not complying with our own slavery any longer, there's a massive crash and that comes down. Because we, the people, are holding up the edifices of power that are dictated to us from the few, from the top. These edifices of power are nothing more than a house of cards which we are holding together. When we say I'm not holding this card together anymore, I'm not acquiescing with my own slavery, it's over. And change must take place, and that's what consciousness is going to bring. Simple example. In Britain today, they're fining people about 200 pounds for putting their trash can out on the wrong day or in the wrong place. 200 quid. And what happens? People go, it's terrible. That's big brother coming in. I think it's disgusting. And the next thing is, what's on the TV tonight? <laughs> now, what if instead of moaning, thousands of people in that area put their wheelie bins, their trash can, can, uh, cans out, 
in the wrong place on the wrong day indefinitely until the law was changed. Doing it like that, the system couldn't cope. It can pick people off individually, yes, but together, we're not having this. They can't do it. We have the power. We've just given it away. This says your vote is your voice. Rubbish. If you've got the uh, choice between voting for this mask on that face and that mask on that face, there is no voice and there is no choice. We're not going to change this politically. We're going to change this by ceasing to acquiesce and cooperate with the system that enslaves us. If we won't comply, no, 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 the system can't function. That doesn't mean we, we don't comply with everything. There's lots of things that, okay, that's, that's all right, we should do that, and it helps to organize society. But imposition, control, suppression, injustice, no. In California now, there are hundreds of thousands of people a month losing their homes. And let's take this round, shall we? Why are you losing your home? I can't pay the mortgage. I can't pay the, 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 the bank. Why can't you pay the bank? Because there's been an economic depression and we've lost our jobs. Who caused the economic depression? The banks that are now taking your home away. And you're leaving? You're leaving? What are we doing? We, we face that injustice and we pack our bags and walk out. What if those hundreds of thousands of people a month who've been subjected to that in one American state alone said, we ain't leaving. We're not leaving because the people making us leave are the people that have created the reason we have to leave. The system couldn't cope. It can pick people off individually. It can get people to do it en masse when they just acquiesce. When we say we're not having it in any like numbers, this is why coming together is so important, the system is impotent. It has no power. You must have compulsory vaccinations. No, no, no. Not having it. Look what happened last uh, year. All this hype about the swine flu. People said no. What happened? Nothing. What they wanted to do was not possible. Then they're trying to do it another way this year. You must do what we say, dark suits. Tell us. No. No, no. We will not acquiesce with our own slavery anymore. It's what I call the non-comply dance. Where we dance to a different drum. We dance to a different beat. We're no longer little me taking it from this edifice of apparent power. We're deciding our own destiny, our own lives. I am all that is. You cannot grant me my freedom, nor can you take it away because I am freedom. You in a dark suit think you can take my freedom away? Are you kidding? What would infinite consciousness do? What would infinite consciousness do in the situations we face? Well, this is what it would do. If it's not right, don't do it. If it's not true, don't say it. And you know what would change this world overnight? And this is where consciousness will come in and do this. Is if we made decisions based not on this perceived what is right for us in the situations we face every day. But we said, what is right what is the right, just, and fair thing for me to do in this circumstance that I face? Because, what the, because of the, the control system and the way we perceive and survival and me, 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 what we're doing all the time in these situations, we're saying, what is the best thing for me here? What are the consequences for me? And so we're making decisions all the time, not based on what is fair and right and just, but what is best for us. And that's why we live in the world we do. If we change that and we say what is right and just and fair, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, I might make, not make so much money as I would if I did what was right for me, uh, uh, the best for me. But it's right and it's just and it's fair. Society would transform. 
If we want a world of peace, we need to be peaceful. It sounds trite and simple, but it happens to be true. If we're all peaceful with each other, we're in a world of peace. If we're all kind to each other, then, we, then we're in a world of kindness. We have the power. You know, we complain about wars, and yet we argue and fight among ourselves, which is just an individual version of the collective thing we call a war. When we change, the world must change. This is why consciousness, the expansion of consciousness is going to transform this world because it's going to bring out a totally different perception and interaction and sense of values. As Martin Luther King said, cowardice asked the question, is it safe? Expediency asked the question, is it politic? Vanity asked the question, is it popular? But conscience asked the question, is it right? And there comes a time when must, one must take a position that is neither safe, nor politic, nor popular, but one must take it because it is right. And that's the consciousness shift that is going to change this reality from what it is to what it's become, going to become, and is becoming among many people. And it's a revolution of perception. The perception that says, hey, I am a lion. I'm not a lamb. I'm not little me. I'm something greater than I ever understood that I was. I'm not that. I'm that. I'm that. I am the lion, not the lamb. I have control over my own destiny. I will take that control. And when people do that, Miracles become possible. Society cannot function as it has functioned so far when we shift our consciousness. There has to be a system failure in the vibrational, therefore digital, therefore holographic world. And we're being given the opportunity now with this truth vibrations and as it moves on and it's getting quicker all the time, the quickening, uh, to open the door, to open the lock, to open the key, to... Uh, say, as the poet Shelley said, the English poet, rise like lions after slumber in unvanquishable number. Shake your chains to earth like dew, which in sleep have fallen on you. Ye are many, they are few. And when we realize that, and they've already realized it, that's why they're ter terrified of us waking up. When we say enough, no more slavery, no more little me, and we express the true magnitude of who we are, we'll realize the chains can be broken because they weren't there at all, really. They were just chains in our mind, believing that someone had power over us when they didn't. It's time to fly. It is time.